So the main issues when it comes to social responsible manufacturing is that we have a very complex supply chain. From the mines, sourcing the minerals, all the way to the final assembly factory, it can involve a great number of suppliers. And these supply chains usually uh, are in, within countries that do not enforce their own uh, labor rights um, you know, to, to increase business investment. And here we see the exploitation of workers happening that need to earn enough money to, you know, to support their living standard and agree to these excessive, uh, you know, um, the limits on their rights. I would say that the IT supply chain is, is much more complex than a lot of other products that we see, you know, from textiles, for example. Um, you know, we're looking at hundreds of suppliers between the mines all the way to the final assembly factory involving components that make up the product. If a brand owner is to secure uh, you know, work, favorable working conditions to the worker in their own factories, I think it would, it's going to take a lot more uh, proactive engagement from the brand owners to do this. I think that uh, what we've seen lacking so far is that the industry as a whole will make demands on a supplier, but will not be there to support them to implement these, these changes. So it's one thing to make demands, but you need to be there to also to support and be engaged with your supplier so that they find a better way to do stuff so they take this seriously. So the ones that own the responsibility for fairly produced products are the, are the brand owners. You know, in the end, it, it comes to their responsibility to support their suppliers uh, and to make sure that they're following the code of conduct you know, and the well-being of the workers. The trouble is though that a lot of the time, these brand owners have very little leverage over the large supply chain. The supplier can have several other customers that aren't driving uh, social responsible manufacturing in the same way as the brand owners, the brand owner that we're focusing on. So this will mean that the, there is no incentive for that supplier to change and to, be, and to improve. When it comes to collecting or collective leverage, we have the chance to put together brand owners to increase that pressure on that supplier. So we can identify which brand owners are using the same supplier and increase that leverage over them to make improvement. So the trends I've seen when it comes to social response manufacturing is that there's a lot more industrial uh, initiatives and programs that are starting up where brands come together to create a collective. Uh, but these usually end up as uh, you know, a way of working together on developing tools to help industry. There's actually no real driver here to you know, follow up and create improvement but only to use the tools, which is a very good start. But if you don't have you know, a consistent way of driving the implementation towards, towards implementing these tools to make sure that they work, then these kind of industry programs can fall short of their intention. So the kind of tools that we're looking at are auditing tools, how you independently audit a factory, how you independently verify that uh, the findings and the, the quality of the audit was conducted in a responsible way. Uh, you can have uh, tools that focus on certain areas when it comes to process chemicals, for example, the types of chemicals that are being used in the factory. And you can have tools that identify certain areas of forced labor, for example. So these are focusing areas of helping the, the, the brand owners identify and work in a, in a systematic way with these issues. But there again, there is no follow-up on the implementation and the closure of such findings. They're only you know, tools generally. So the most important thing you can do as a buyer to affect the supply chain is to work together as a group because if you do not, if you're not in a, in a position to create enough leverage over the supply chain, 
then you will have less possibility of, of making a positive impact on that supply chain. As we're working with TCO development and TCO certified, we make a collective and you know to increase the leverage of brand owners on certain suppliers. And I think that you know a, a purchaser that demands TCO certified is actually making a step towards that kind of leverage and that kind of impact on the supply chain that's necessary to make improvement. So the difference between corporate social responsibility and social responsible manufacturing is that social responsible manufacturing is focusing on the issues within the factory and along the supply chain. When it comes to corporate social responsibility, we're looking at a more broader impact on society in general, not just by production of what's happening, but also how that production involves and impacts society in general. 